Hello, I'm Aubrey Shepard. It's the 20th of August 2012. Let's see some photos from Arkansas. Uh, actually, Fayetteville, Arkansas. And uh, we'll uh, talk about some. That's a milkweed plant that's been stolen right off of World Peace Wetland Prairie. It and several others were dug up in the last few days. Last time I've been out there uh, was very recently, so it happened just before this. Also, somebody apparently tried to steal that tire. That tire there was uh, in place 17 years ago, and it's off a tractor, and I think it was a tractor that was mowing World Peace Wetland Prairie way back in the day. Something went wrong, and they left it. But it served as a great bridge through the uh, uh, wettest portion, the main flow area of the World Peace Wetland Prairie. So we saw the sign uh, uh, awarding uh, Fayetteville the honor of being the first habitat community in Arkansas for wildlife habitat. And now we're seeing apartments. And that's what I call the, the One Oak Grove apartment complex. It's the Grove and it's on the uh, sale barn property. And that one tree was the only one required to be preserved. And you can see the, the dirt piled around its base. And no, well, they planted some, some uh, grass, but the grass is over red dirt. And that's true all along the edge there. Uh, also, when their machines damage that street sign, it says done in 11th Street. Maybe that'll get fixed before long. And that's the turf. They roll it out on top of rocky uh, base material. And so all the green space you see on that site will be what I call fake green space. This is some of their machinery actually over on the property of Hershey Garner. Uh, who owns the uh, bus station and the, the old bus station and the brick house. And uh, the, the vacant lot of his was treated like the property of these contractors. I was afraid they were going to actually pave it and uh, it wouldn't be any absorbent soil left, but they really messed it up. This is the uh, University of Arkansas Medical Science uh, group, and I, I don't know if Part of them are professionals, or all of them, or part of them are students, or what. But they were giving medical tests on the square last Saturday. That was, what, the 18th? And there you see Mayor Lionel Jordan talking to a man who brought his daughter to meet him. And she interviewed him a little bit, I think. There one of, there's one of my friends that used to work at the senior center. And guess what? Even though he, he doesn't make a lot of money, uh, he brings canned goods and donates sometimes, and, and that's what he was doing that day. Uh, people donate there, and the, the food and any money collected for that same purpose uh, goes to the, the uh, various food banks to, to distribute the food. That's Joanne Kavami and her daughter. I forgot her daughter's name. I just heard it once, and I, it takes me years to learn some people's names. I'll get it next week, maybe. And that's Beth Presley's son at left and Beth Presley's grandson in the arms of Beth's daughter-in-law and they're good friends of the Kavami family. And there's one of our shelter volunteers. He was telling me uh, lots of interesting things about uh, uh, how the shelter's going to, to as fast as they can to a total no-kill and under the administration of uh, Mayor Jordan, and they're really doing a great job. That's Bob Jordan, no relation, I guess. But anyway, he's always wearing a T-shirt. That would say Prairie Home Companion. He's got a great collection, Sierra Club and other neat things. Okay, that's a tiny hair streak or blue uh, butterfly. And, of course, I had to get down real close and even crop that a little bit to get a better shot of it. Kind of a cute video of it also walking around down there. Okay, that's uh, the family. The reason I'm showing the, the young generation, that uh, that son and, and family will be moving out of state for a new job in the family. So uh, just had to toss them in. That, hair, that uh, skipper moth is actually in our next segment about the uh, Clinton House Museum. And that's where I found that uh, 
skipper moth and, and photographed it. Till next time, it's Auburn Shepherd asking you to do your part to help keep the water clean, the air pure, and the woods great. See you. Let's look at some photos again, made just before the 20th of August, 2012, in Fayetteville, Arkansas. And these will show you uh, the Clinton House Museum. That's uh, some folks, that lady uh, in the picture, I believe is, I don't know, is she in both the Sierra Club with me and the Environmental Action Committee? Anyway, she had her family there, and it was free day. It was a celebration of Bill Clinton's 66th birthday. And you see, we had some candidates for office, no presidential candidates there, however. And this is a group of students from other nations. The, the blonde girl in the center is from Russia, and the others are from various places in the Far East. And uh, there's Lauren Hawkins sitting down to talk with them. And uh, she's uh, uh, part Italian and German, and she sort of fits in with them there with a little ethnic look, and I admire that. Uh, she doesn't get sunburned as easily as I do. But anyhow, the um, wasp there was on a cauliflower, and that's, that's still at the Clinton House Museum. And Edwin Sugg is running for office in, in uh, Fayetteville in Washington County. And here we go back to uh, long ago when Dale Buppers was running for U.S. Senate and Bill Clinton was running for U.S. Congress. And I believe in both cases they made it at that, that particular time. Or, no, Bill never got to Congress. He got to be, well, he was a law professor when he was here, and I actually knew him. We had boxes uh, at the post office, boxes, side by side almost. And I saw him frequently down there, always checking the mail late in the morning. And that's... Uh, Ben and Christy Pollock, and they were there enjoying the cake, big uh, Bill Clinton birthday cake, and looking at all the uh, various displays. And that's uh, Angie Albright, Angie Malloy Albright, and she was there, and you can see on the wall, it's right next to the Comeback Kid, 1982-84. Uh, okay, get some of my favorite wildflowers again. These have been running for a month, and Maybe another, I hope I can find a few more later, but they're about all done. And this is basket flower. And there's one in full bloom, although, again, it's been so dry that they're just about uh, gone out of style too fast this year. And then maybe, yeah, there's a different view. You can catch these things at different stages. Even though they're not in prime stage, they're beautiful. And once again, I did something, I cropped something wrong, or I don't know what, but some, something's missing in that case. I don't know if there's another slide coming up after that or not. But yeah, there, there I can see it. Uh, the, uh, this is a Gulf fritillary, and the Gulf, as in Gulf of Mexico, fritillary is uh, on the... Uh, on a native thistle. You can tell native thistles because they're not nearly as dangerous looking and they're, um, excuse me, they uh, have white under the wings, or I'm sorry, under the, bo the bottom part of the leaves. So there's the Gulf Fritillary again. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. My cropping somehow is causing problems. Melissa Terry and another friend, and they were, uh, at the uh, home of the uh, Charles uh, Leffler and uh, other visitors there. Uh, Lev Guter, who's a professional for the uh, uh, Sierra Club at Left. And so, well, I'll jump ahead. Here's this, see the ground looks bare there. Only a week ago, there were several milkweed plants, and I was admiring how they had held their foliage in spite of the dry weather. Well, there's one that's still out there in bloom, and it wasn't stolen, but all the ones in that little patch were dug out, and I didn't discover it until this morning, the 20th of August, and I was pretty frustrated because I was hoping the 
the monarch caterpillars who were probably some were probably already using those. They, they some of them had been used a little, but great thing they would be here for this final generation of monarchs. Now, the best outcome is that the person who dug these up is actually there's a good chance that person is raising monarchs, but. People like me and, and uh, Cindy Cope would not dig them from a public park. We might go somewhere that uh, was likely to be mowed again this year and, and dig one with permission of the uh, property owners or a development site that was definitely going to be wiped out. But you don't dig them out of a public park and take them regardless of your purpose. I could provide them a seed or a bunch of seeds or even taking them to a field where they'd have permission to dig a few of those kinds of plants. Till next time, do your part to help keep the water clean, the air pure, and the woods green. See ya.